And then, uh, yeah, we'll give it away to Charles. So um, just real quick, so the power contest, those numbers didn't come out. We still have about nine days left on that. Uh, I do see Andy is still in the running and Jesus is in the running for the noob uh, section. So good job to you two. Uh, I know Bo and Dana are close behind them as well. Uh, so it'd be nice if we can get two, three to four guys um, all together out there to join Charles and Jim and Jonathan and all them. Uh, Power World, it did get extended. Uh, Charles will probably talk a little bit more to that, uh, maybe towards the end of the call. Uh, if, if you want to, I'll, I'll let you handle that, Charles. Um, we did post something. There is SolarCon coming up uh, in mid to late April. It'll take place in Utah. There is a discount for five seats. Right now we have four seats. So we need a, a fifth person to join us out there. And we'll get a, a team discount. Uh, and then last thing before I hand it over to Charles, uh, Dana actually got an email recently from Rachel. Uh, now, I usually get emails from Rachel, but they're usually not positive. <laughs> She's usually yelling at me or yelling at someone on my team, uh, telling me to, hey, go yell at this person. Um, but uh, Dana was actually uh, called out by Rachel recently for being one of the top closers in our area. Uh, so shout out to Mr. LeBlanc. Uh, good job there, sir. And um, yeah, so like I said, I just wanted to run through everything real quick, uh, hand it off to Charles. So Charles, all you, brother. And I uh, really appreciate your time. For those of you guys that don't know, he's our field liaison. He's the connective tissue between corporate and between sales. Uh, he is the number one earner in the company. Uh, Bobby said last yesterday, he's potentially the number one earner in solar in the world right now. Uh, and so he's, he's given us some time and uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so Charles, if you want to take it away, brother. My honor to be here. I want to make sure we get the echoes all squared away. Maybe just mute all, and that way people can unmute here. Stand by. Thank you for making me. Muted yourself, Charles. Muted yourself. <laughs> well, that's what mute's all about. You don't want to mute everybody else and mute yourself. But obviously, that's as we, right, get right. Into the, we get into the Q&A, we want to be able to have you come off of mute. Uh, oddly enough, we had to reschedule this a few times because of travel and obligations that I've had. And then... We rescheduled it for tonight, and I made dinner plans with Mr. Jim Bunch, who you'll see in a minute, and Michelle Bunch and my wife. So we're all here together. Uh, we're going to postpone our eating until we're done with this meeting. So just so you know. So thank you for having me. And I, you know, I think the hot topic has been enterprise, which I'll I'll talk a little bit about, and I'll also really share with you how to get access to the information that you need. Uh, today, I did a one-hour training slash Q&A on Seller Tuesday. That's now in the assets section. Irene should have had that already uploaded. We recently released a new video and PDF, and that's probably going to be replaced by another new video and PDF in about two weeks because this program just continues to morph, and I'll put some context to it. We've been in what, eight years in operations. And we rolled this model out three years ago. And to me, it was like a restart of the company. And in that period of time, we've grown to a, a little over 5,000 sellers in our platform. In 60 days, we have almost 6% of our active people in the platform who are enterprise. In 60 days, what does that tell you? that tells you that this program is getting some peak interest. And it's, it's largely coming from organizations, right? There are individuals like us who can leverage enterprise, but then there are businesses who have pushed back on power for years now, particularly as we evolved into the general contractor and everything that we do. This program solves that. I have personally onboarded seven solar companies into the platform and at least that many other roofers and companies that really want to be able to control their destiny within the platform. And I'll walk you through a couple of things tonight, but I really want to get to Q&A because the, the thing that I found that people need to understand is what direction should I go with somebody? I've got a candidate. What direction should I be? You know, we all are single licensed sellers in the platform. We just call us consultants, right? We all pay 49 bucks a month to have a license to leverage the platform, which to me is the greatest, greatest 
price for anything that you could ever do in any business. Enterprise allows for features, options that we don't have currently. I upgraded to enterprise personally because I needed help with support. And that's what enterprise allows us to do, to have a support person or persons. I have three on my team now, and they're able to answer tickets. They're able to communicate with the project managers. They're able to request proposals after, because I've trained them to do that, right? So rather than doing it myself, that's, that's where you start to evolve and you're able to run a, a bigger business. You don't start there. You start by just selling solar, selling solar, referring others to sell solar, and then that gains momentum over time as much as you want it to be. So you may never want to be there or you may want to get there faster. And that's why I'll be here to kind of help guide you the best I can and how to leverage enterprise. And then when it gets into there's enterprise, there's enterprise pro, the distinct differences between them are just one feature. Enterprise has a lot of features that you'll find in the training, but Enterprise Pro allows an organization to seat sellers. That's the, that's the only distinct difference between them. They can seat a seller. So in your interviewing process and your consideration process, you got to find out a little bit about that company. And maybe I'll have Jim talk a little bit about what he did today with, with another group and how he explained how he effectively interviews them, whether they're good for Enterprise or Enterprise Pro. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll share with you power resources. And everybody probably knows where that's at. If you go to power and you go down to the resource, the knowledge bases that you go to, if you type in enterprise now, which I will do, I'm going to pull up my screen and show you how to find the resources that we've created. That way we can just really focus on Q and a today. Okay. Does that work for you, Anthony and Bo? I know you're here as well somewhere. Yes, sir. Thank you, yes, sir. sir work. There you are, Bo. In the in the dark down there. <laughs> I see you now. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the dark, but in the dark, but you're not in the dark, literally in the dark. <laughs> All right. It's just dark where you are. All right. So if we look at Solar Sales Tuesday, what we did today will be available right here. So it's a, a presentation and a live QA, tons of questions. But if you just type in enterprise right here. I typed in enter and I find Power Enterprise and Power Enterprise Pro. So enterprise right here. This is the original recording that we did. And the PDF that we did explains the basic features between the two. Okay. I read it in a phenomenal job of putting that together. But now there's a new PDF and new video. Because what we found is many people didn't even understand our cost of goods model who were considering going into enterprise. So we recorded this to be able to speak to that audience. And there's a new video, you see right here, that was done in the studio, about a 20 minute video. And you can download, you can share, you can do whatever you want with those resources. And most of the questions that you will have will be provided in here. But this is the simplest way to look at it. So I just typed in enterprise, as you can see, and it shows the differences between the licenses that we have within the platform. And I'll, I'll highlight those with simple. In Enterprise versus Enterprise Pro. Enterprise allows them to access all the training that we have. They're not required to do that training. It allows them to get support. It allows them to input leads and allows them to access their project. So that's lead generation. That's, in, that's available in all enterprise programs. Enterprise seller is only available in pro. That's the difference between them. And a pro can access the same tools, but can accept lead offers from the enterprise owner. They can access their projects, not all the projects, and they re can respond to tickets on their projects. That's really the difference between the two. Managers, owners, pro owners, they have all the features that you can see here. So just look at that inside the knowledge base. And I think it will give you a lot more understanding of what are the features that are available inside Enterprise or Enterprise Pro, okay? That being said, what I'll do is just kind of stop my screen share. Really, my goal tonight is to be able to answer questions 
for each of you because you know you can watch the video a hundred times. I've done group trainings, I've done the videos, and I'm using it. So I'm an enterprise license holder. I'm moving to Enterprise Pro now that I'm off the road for about a month. And the only reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to seat sellers. I'm going to put people in my organization that I can then drive leads to and have them close them potentially at a lower rate than what I'm paying people within the Power Platform. That's the only difference. And it gives an organization true functionality control. That's why a lot of companies have pushed back on Power. They say, ah, this doesn't fit my model. This fits every model. And we have not only sales organizations, but we have installers who are now leveraging the Power Platform. I'll dive into that in a minute, but I wanna open it up to any questions on what you have already heard or maybe what the misconceptions are about enterprise. Okay. And I know it's not easy sometimes we first get into questions, you know, feeling comfortable asking questions, but please feel comfortable. If you wanna chime in or, or even you wanna post in the chat and myself yeah. and Charles can maybe, uh, you know, uh, read it and, and address it. But real quick, um, Charles, so you're going to, to pro, what would the advantage be uh, maybe for a rep coming into your organization versus joining the actual platform and joining you under, uh, underneath? Is that something where maybe they're not paying the 100 and the 150 and going through the tier one, tier two, two tier three, what kind of what's the advantage there for okay. a rep? So there's really, unless somebody has a team where they are running a business and they're, right. they're having administrative support, there's no reason to go to enterprise. Mm -hmm. and, and the vast majority of people Maybe it's going to be 10% of the company that would be valid for Enterprise or Enterprise Pro. 90% right. of us are really just going to use and leverage the platform as a single license holder. We get all the same. The features aren't different in terms of cost of goods and all that. It's the same across the board. Right. The difference comes with functionality of the platform. Okay. So in the interview process, if you will, because... That's kind of where you can head to. You can head to take that one video that's inside there now. It, it actually ends with the three different pathways, single seller, enterprise, and enterprise pro. And if they watch that video, your only responsibility should be answering questions. Don't pitch people on enterprise. Don't deviate from what you're currently doing and building your business and selling solar. Number one thing we should be doing is selling solar. Yep. Number two is referring people to do the same. Number three comes in when you feel comfortable with the language, but don't distract yourself from number one and number two. Once you get there and you're able to start referring organizations, then yeah, there's another level of freedom that can come from that. Because think about this. If you onboard an organization who's doing 30 accounts per month, how many sellers does it take you to get 30 new contracts per month. Anybody want to take a guess at that? 30. If you're lucky, if you're good, if you, if you vet, if you just want to make sure you're getting true sellers in the platform, but on average, I probably say it's going to take you 80 to hundred sellers in your organization reality to hit potentially what one organization can do. Now that may sound lucrative, but then you have to learn the language. You have to feel comfortable with the conversation. The videos should be your heavy lifting. Just like in the early days when we really started power, the heavy lifting came from what we now call power hour. Yeah. And it came from the video recordings of that. And then you just get in and answer questions. Until you're comfortable answering the questions, rely on your leadership. You got a great organization here. You know, Anthony and Bo and, and several others in this team are just truly amazing. So leverage them, but don't get them involved in conversation until somebody's watched the video because 90% yeah. of the questions are going to be answered in the video. Okay. Okay. Other questions, comments? Come in, guys. Dana, I see That's your hand up there. Chris just answered your question. Good. Yep. Yeah. Focus on selling and referring. Amen. Again, this is not to distract you. This is just, you evolve. We've all evolved over time. The company's evolved over time. And then you will as well. So if you look into this saying, ah, I'm just not ready for that, that's okay. 
you'll be ready in time if that's what you want to do. I have a quick question, <clears throat> Charles. Oh, so sir. you kind of you mentioned in the video, you kind of let them vet themselves and what, what they kind of want to do. Is there a kind of a certain, I guess, threshold where you have like, say, for example, a lead company, which is there where you would pitch them becoming a consultant versus enterprise? Yeah, it's a, that's probably one of the perfect candidates for enterprise, mm -hmm. not enterprise pro, because they're not selling, right? right? They're probably a perfect candidate in the sense that you can almost flip the script on them. How many lead gen companies have you been hit by go, Bo? And, you know, I got the greatest leads. I just require a $3,000 a month fixed guarantee. And then you, you get the ad spend and we manage your campaign. I don't have enough fingers and toes on a day that I hear from that. And, if, and you know, a conversation can be if, you, if your leads are worth a the shit, then you should actually be in our platform. And my follow-up question is, what is the average cost of acquisition of your leads to contract? What's the cost of acquisition? And they're going to give you a number. Oftentimes, that number is going to be, anybody want to take a guess? But what, what would somebody say the average cost of acquisition is? Should be roughly about 20 bucks a lead for a good, a lead. decent lead. If, not. if you, you take the conversion ratios from that and to contract, what would the actual cost of acquisition be to go to contract on average? On average, bucks, probably yeah. at least 100, 200 bucks. Okay. All right. How about if I say 100, 200 bucks? How about if I pay you $1,500 per conversion? It's a deal. 1500 bucks. Yeah. yeah. And I'll pay you more in what we call milestone one than your current cost of acquisition is what you're telling me it is. I'll pay you 40% of that number. If it's 1500, whatever the number is, I'll pay you that at M1. Power will actually pay it. You don't have to do it. They pay it M1, which as some might know during the virtual site survey, that could be 48 hours after contract. Right? I'll pay you more in milestone one, just by contract being signed, then your cost of acquisition is on your company. And then because I want a trusted partnership, they'll pay the balance after it's installed and I'll pay you X fold times whatever your current cost of acquisition you claim it is. If their leads are worth the ship, they'll see it. Yep. If they're not, move on. So would you always push like a company like this to do the enterprise model versus just being a consultant and running them through like the mentor program? You could actually seat that lead generator as the trial. So I'll seat you. I'll pay what you probably heard about power. There's some licensing fees. I'm going to go ahead and seat you as a lead generator in my enterprise. So in that case, you would gotcha. have to be an enterprise holder. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can seat that seller. I'm sorry, that, that lead generator. And then you can set the number that you're willing to pay them based upon that conversation. It can be set for every lead that they submit, or you can vary that based upon you know, what type of lead they're submitting, et cetera. But keep it simple. Said, Look, I'll pay you 1500 bucks a deal. 40% of that 1500 dollars I'm going to give you at M1 after we do site survey. And the balance of that's going to be paid after we get installed. No, that makes perfect sense. But what a, in a in a scenario for maybe say when the new know someone new who's who's just joined, they're not going to want to do an enterprise model at the beginning, right? So they have some lead gen company that contacted them to say, hey, you know, we have this new enterprise model. Yep. So would you push them to the enterprise? Do you think it'd be good for them to go to the, like an enterprise model or just sign up as a consultant and, and run the leads as a kind of a split leads kind of thing? Yeah, you, if they just do seller slash consultant then they're going to be able to leverage the entire platform of tier three sellers, right? Our mentors without needing mentoring. But if, if you look a little bit ahead, so you could start there at 49 bucks a month, or you can become an enterprise where you actually can put the leads in the platform and you can leverage our tier two and tier three sellers you require no mentorship and you can pay them less if your quality of leads is as good as you say they are. That's where enterprise might make sense for okay. them. Okay. Thanks. You bet. Dana, I know you had your hand raised there. Bo, can you unmute him or, or can someone unmute him? 
I think go. Doug had his hand raised. Hey, Charles, how you doing, sir? Wonderful, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your time tonight. So a couple questions for you. Uh, that 175, um, which is the license fee, um, is that paid by us as you know mentors or consultants in power, or is that passed through to the customer that we signed up under the enterprise program? So whoever is holding that license is who pays that 175 to 350. So single license, which most people have is 49 bucks a month. Enterprise is 175 a month and Enterprise Pro is 350 a month, plus any seats that they have. And if you don't know about those, just not you, Dana, but if you don't know about those, go into re the knowledge base and look at the most recent Enterprise video. It breaks it down pretty effectively. They pay that. Now, you would pay that if you want to bring someone in, kind of the example that Bo was giving. Maybe you get a really good lead gen company and you don't want them to have to worry about paying any monthly fees, you know, the, the typical objections that you get. Upgrade to enterprise and seat them as a seller for 25 bucks a month. Now you get $200 a month in fixed costs. Where are you going to run a lead gen campaign with no out-of-pocket costs for 200 bucks a month? Right. And, and okay. that is being paid by the, by, by, the by so if, if I found you as a lead generator, I have to, uh, I'd upgrade to enterprise and I would then seat you as a lead generator. Mm -hmm. I'm paying 175 for my position and 25 for yours until you start seeing some traction. Then I can say, Dana, my gosh, man, you get 10 contracts. Mm -hmm. Why don't you just get your own license? And now you can control completely what right. you want to get paid. Okay. Cool. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great program. Uh, the second question was, uh, you talked about under the Enterprise Pro uh, that you're going to be selling seats. Um, are you going to mentor those deals or are you trying to get those seats to a mentor position where they be can begin to, to grow that organization? Your call. As an Enterprise Pro, you have the ability to seat your sellers and you can say they require zero mentorship or they can require up to seven mentorship. And that can be you or you can require them to go and or, or, or allow them to go get other mentors on their deals. You completely okay. control that. It can be zero. So if you're an organization, like you bring in an organization today, they're saying, hey, you know, I got all my people. They already know how to sell. They don't need any mentorship. Okay. You're as an owner, you're responsible for your account. So you can say, I want them to do more or I want them to do none. That's totally right. your discretion. Okay. Yeah, great. Yeah, we have an, uh, an opportunity tomorrow. Uh, I'm meeting with a builder here in the Modesto area that uh, is looking to grow a sales team. They used to offer solar. Um, they don't anymore, but he's looking to get into a situation where he can actually grow a sales team, uh, you know, uh, as a product offering, um, you know, in his company. And so, uh, of course, I'm going to have, I want to have the, uh, the, the communication, you know, right when I meet with them, but uh, this could definitely be an opportunity for something like that. Right. Yeah. Sounds like a good opportunity. Good, Dana. Appreciate it. Doug, I know you've had your hand up there, my man. What you got? I guess you ask you to unmute. There we go. There you uh, go. Uh, my pleasure to speak to you in person for the first time. Likewise, <laughs> sir. Thank you. Uh, so I've been in solar thermal for 42 years uh, selling, and uh, the last 15 years I've had my own company. I get a couple hundred of thermal leads a year, and I'm turning those, I'm trying to weed, weed that down. But I found a guy who's doing my installs now so I can focus more on power. And I think he would be a good candidate because I vetted him already. He's been had his own company for 15 years and he does PV also. So is that an enterprise type of a thing or? or yeah. That... Yeah. You know, this is one to me, one of the most exciting things about enterprise is the ability to partner with solar installation companies. And if you think about this, there's 14,000 or more solar companies in the United States. Lone Pal slash Goodleap only has 220 on their platform. What kind of percentage is that? 220. Uh, so, so 
5.7, something like that. <laughs> so yeah, so if you think about it, if you, you've got the average solar company who's out there doesn't have access to the lending products that they can get directly from power with transparency, with no markup on dealer fees, none of that. And I'll, so I'll dive in before I exit for dinner, I'll dive into Redline versus cost of goods in a minute. But that alone is really enough for most orgs to say, I'll just run my deals through power and I'll install my own projects. I get access to the best lending projects. I get access to the best cost of goods and equipment. I owned my own solar company. I couldn't get the cost of goods that I get through power now. I've met with solar companies. So I asked them their price on what there are for modules, REC being the most popular. Mm -hmm. And there's a 13 to 15 cent disparity of what they're paying to CED, our just most distribution, to what they can get through power. I mean, that alone says, look at the margin that you're going to get to cover your 375 per month or whatever the case may be. It's, it's, it's a software platform. Power is a platform. And it gives them access to things that I, did, I never had in my own company. We were a very popular company in Dallas-Fort Worth. So that same company is actually coming on the platform now, by the way. And they're doing 80 accounts per month. They're looking at the benefits of cost of goods. Think about this. I don't have to have a line of credit. I can leverage power's buying power. Power ships the equipment directly to my warehouse or to my project. I don't have to worry about any of that. My cash flow is consistent. I'm getting M1 and M2 payments. I don't have any responsibility to even have all that necessary, that, the, the costs that are associated with it. And I get better financing vehicles. I get better cost of goods on equipment. Why not? That's an ecosystem. And those people who are labor partners in what we used to call them are part of that whole process. We feed them, they feed us. Are they ever going to leave? And their salespeople, they can onboard their salespeople as seated sellers and control what they pay them. The biggest fear in the solar industry is I lose my best people. Mm -hmm. I invest all my time. I finally get them where they're successful. They're independent. They're, they're having a great time. Then they go find Titan, Palmetto, or any other red line program, and I lose them. Put them in the power platform, they'll never leave you because there's no better vehicle out there than the power platform. Really? So you, you, those kind of conversations, it may take time for you to get comfortable with it, not just speaking to you, Doug, saying mm -hmm. in general, but you have to understand the whole, we call it the flywheel effect. The bigger power gets, the bigger we get, the better our buying power gets, which means the cost of goods reduces. And in a red line model, that's why I said I'll dive into that, red line is lack of transparency. If you get a Titan, let's just say as an example, the bigger they get, do you ever see them dropping their red line? No. You don't have any idea what their margin is. With power, as we drop our cost of goods, you and I get 70 to 80% of that benefit of the drop. Likewise, with regard to financing fees, dealer fees that are associated in Titan's model, Palmetto's model, all of those models, they're getting rebates from the lenders anywhere from three to five percentage points. Is that going to the homeowner? Is that going to the seller? No, it's going to Titan, it's going to Palmetto. In this scenario, that gets back to us on a 70 to 80% share. Because that's the next step for Enterprise Pro is the ability to earn 80%, not 70%, milestone up to 80%. This will crush any red line program out there and just be candid. Any red line program that you're looking at is going to be 20 to 30 cents a watt higher than what it presents itself to be to the organizations. And the last note on that is when an individual seller, which is what power is built for, we all know that, an individual seller who's on a red line program, when they have to cut down their, their numbers, right? They're really a competitive situation. I got I to gotta get to the skinny. I'm going to reduce my margin to 60 cents a watt. In a red line program, is a red line change when you have to get really competitive? Nope, it stays the same. They're the only ones who lose, if you will, lose. They have to take a cut in their commissions. In a cost of goods model, everyone shares in that, but the lion, the lion share of the benefit goes to the seller, not to power. That to me is 
I'm going to record a video next week that breaks down a comparison of COGS versus Redline. And if you share that with somebody that says to you, hey, what's your Redline? Okay. All right. Let me, let me, let me shoot this video to you. Okay. Uh -huh. I promise to get that done here in the next two weeks because that's the biggest thing that we're, fight, we're fighting, right? We're fighting against red lines. I'll get you that asset. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of new recruits I've, I've noticed lately uh, are reps that we've been interviewing with recently. They, uh, they just go straight to the cut. Hey, I've been selling solar X amount of years yeah. and uh, what's your red line? You know, how does it compare? Yeah, that'd be a nice resource to have. Yeah. The red line is an outdated model. It's all there is to it. We're going to replace that. We're going to disrupt this industry with a fully transparent cost of goods model. We've been saying that for a long time, but enterprise is actually going to allow for us to be able to achieve just that. Uh, is the revenue share, let's say um, you were to onboard an enterprise or enterprise pro underneath you that was doing 30 to 80 deals a month, is the revenue share the same? Revenue share is the same. However, as we implement the 72.5, 75, 77.5, 80% share, it's going to come out of our margin because Simply Power can't operate on such low margins. But think about that. If maybe today, if you look at a level one referrer that you've referred, 600 bucks on average, what if that goes to 300 bucks on average? But that company is doing 60 deals a month. Okay, 60 times 30 is how much? 60 times $18,000 a month in passive income. Yep. I, yeah, I can cut a little bit, shave a little bit of my margin for power to be able to provide that vehicle for those companies to be able to do that. So it'll go in scales. It'll go to 72.5, then 75, then 77, and then 80. And each time it does, then we some margin will come off of our side. But then they're doing volume. How much time do you invest into a single seller to get zero dollars? Just the way you get to look at it. It's give and take. Right, right, right. And so, if no one else. Oh, sorry, John, go, go ahead. I was going to say, if no one else has any questions, I just wanted just one thing. What other um, companies are we seeing uh, come on board? And the part two was going to see if Jim can say hello. How are we? Yep. I've been wanting, I told you, I've been That'll wanting be, to have him on one of our part team two meetings. Will be so. Jim, saying, Jim saying hello. Jim, Jim is how my, are you, brother? my neighbor, and there's Michelle. Hi. New, hey. So <laughs> new to the business. <laughs> right. right, right. Yep. Uh, obviously went on the whole journey with Jonathan, but now saw what we saw and decided yep. to lock arms with his amazing wife, Michelle, after witnessing her going from a couple thousand dollars a month to what she's doing now. I'll let Jim say that. And I'm excited because we're here actually talking a little bit about that next strategy. So beautiful. who are we seeing coming in? It ranges primarily to anybody touching a home. But right now we've kind of nailed down the roofing conversation. I think next is going to be alarm companies who are obviously touching a home. Air conditioning, probably a Q3 initiative because we'll have the ability to connect those companies to power. And solar companies. It's hands off for power's existing install network because it's too confusing to have 5,000 people trying to pitch our labor partners on, hey, why don't you become enterprise? Too confusing. Okay. Stay away from them. But new and small to mid-sized solar companies, the videos that you have in there will speak to that audience and they're a great candidate to become part of the ecosystem. So Mr. Bunch, hey, turn it over to you, sir. Well, I think the, the core question um, that people were asking was how do you talk to a business owner, you know, CEO to CEO or business owner to business owner? So I typically just ask questions and, and I'll ask you guys, you know, if you're the CEO of a company, what's one of the most important things that you're focused on all the time? What's one of the numbers that you should be thinking about? at all times, doesn't matter if you're in solar or roofing or HVAC or, or any business, what's the number that you should be concerned about? Uh, profit, customer acquisition. Profit, um, profit, that's it. Revenues are, you know, revenues are to tell your friends about, but profit is what you tell your banker about. And so the questions that I'm asking are, you know, I'm just curious, how long have you been in business, right? So I wanna figure out how long you've been in business. 
What kind of revenues are you doing? Make, make notes. That's good. I see Anthony and Dana mm -hmm. and a few others started to make notes. That's good. And, and this isn't an opening conversation after they've watched the video with Charles. Yep. So I'm not, I'm coming right in at, you know, owner to owner, CEO to CEO. So curious how long you've been in business. Uh, congratulations. You know, I'm curious, how many employees do you have? How many of those are selling? Well, let's just say it's roofing that I'm talking to. Cool. So you're, you know, you've been in business for 20 years. Uh, you know, you've got 30 employees, 16 of those are sellers. This is an actual example of a Colorado roofer. Um, and I said, do you mind if I ask what you're doing in revenues? He said, I'm doing 10 million a year. And I said, cool. What kind of margins you're running? So where am I getting to? I want to know, you know, what kind of profitable business does he have? Awesome. So I'm asking these questions. I go, do you currently sell solar or is this a new conversation for you? Have you been selling it or outsourcing it to somebody else, Titan or Palmetto or whoever? So I'm trying to figure out what the model is. How much experience does he have in this space so that I can then start to prepare my, my conversation? And then I start asking questions about, you know, you've been in this business for 20 years. You've got, you know, 30 people, 16 of them to 20 of them are sellers. You lose three or four. So you bring on the new ones. Da, da, da. Um, I'm curious, you know, you dominate this market in, say, Denver. Do you have any expansion plans? Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm talking about partnering with somebody down in Austin and Houston and uh, Arizona. I said, cool. How are you going to expand? In other words, if you're a business owner and you're dominating this area for 20 years and you're now expanding what's the first thing that you should be thinking about? The, the cost of expansion, the risk, the extra staff, the, the stress, because you, you dominated this territory and now you're telling me you want to grow. So your growth is through territory expansion, which means more trucks, more employees, more risk, more da da da. And I said, okay, I have enough information. Um, and let's say in this case, they had been uh, not selling it, but handing it over to Titan. Right? So they're not actually selling it. They're staying focused on their core business, which is roofing. And now they just want to partner. And, and then I'm asking them, well, you know, mind if I ask you, what kind of deal did you have structured with them? So I'm getting their numbers. Once I have all that data, then I can share with them what Charles has already shared with you. Some of the tweaks that I make to the conversation is, is I feedback what they've already said. And I said, that's great. You know, you've been in business for 20 years. You've got 30 employees, 16 of them are sellers. You know, you're doing on average how many roofs? And they'll tell me, well, you know, we, we are knocking on 100 doors and we've got an online lead gen program, uh, you know, every week. And, you know, we're doing 20 to 30 roofs a week. And I said, cool. What percentage of those people are interested in solar, right? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50%. Great. You're currently making what with Titan? Okay, awesome. So what if, and then I start laying out what power is, right? What if you had the top converting sellers in the platform if you didn't want to sell it, or if you decided you wanted to take some of your best guys and put them on the platform and have them sell? These are options that we can discuss. Here's what those margins could look like. What if instead of you having all that capital risk and you going to other territories, and, and you know, putting your core business at risk or your capital that you've been stuffing aside, right? What if instead of doing that, you could actually you know, have those partners in that territory cost you nothing and it's pure profit from day one. In addition to that, what if all of the competitors that you've been boxing out of your territory for roofing, what if they actually became your partners because you could now invite them onto the platform and you could override them, turn your competitors into your collaborators? Just curious, how would that sound? Pause, get feedback. So now you've positioned that we have a solution that's, that's solving some of their, their problems. Bottom line is more money, less risk, less effort. Interested? To that point, we, you're going to hear on the first Wednesday, we're covering roofing. We're going to bring in one of our roofing partners who has leveraged the enterprise model in his business to take it to a whole nother level, one of the top roofers in all of Texas. And I was in a meeting with him with 20 other competitors, 20 competitors who actually are becoming part of Power's platform under him. Yeah. It's like now he's making passive income off his competitors. And First in in this game is real. It's a real estate grab. Bobby often says that's a real estate grab. 
and, and, and you ask them how many, you know, how many people in the industry do you know? And how long have you known these people? And what would it look like there? And by the way, how many solar companies have already had this conversation that you could also add on the platform? How many HVAC people do you know? How many window people do you know? You've been in this business for 20 years. So now I'm just, you know, opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. It's really simple. The only thing we got to decide is, do you want to start as a single seller or do you want to, to seed at enterprise? That's it. Lot to digest, lots to process. Went fast Power research. It's great. It's great. And you got a recording of this. So definitely. Appreciate get it, Jim. Yeah, we have it. Yeah. All right, y'all. Thank you very much for having us here. The best is ahead. Yeah, appreciate y'all. Enjoy your dinner. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, guys. You.